Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Look what NECA sent me. Isn't this thing preposterously amazing? This is their huge, massive, uh, giant god of war. Um, it's, uh, I think it's life-size. It's, he's so big, he's basically a roommate. Hello, it's me. Hello. Uh, so we're not going to have this up the whole time, but I wanted you guys to see this. It comes with this uh, diorama display, and it's heavy. This thing is a serious figure. It's it's uh, it's to scale. Can, can I keep this here, Blake? Or no, it's going to fall off here. I'll put this over here. Okay, there it is. Okay, right there. But Kratos is staying with us. Look at this incredible Kratos figure. It is so rad. It's so amazing. Thank you, NECA. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about God of War in a in a little bit. I'll slide him over just a bit. Axes. He's so big. We got to make like room for him. All the way? Okay, so it's, it's way over there. Isn't that insane? This is so cool. Uh, I think it's sixth scale or something like that. Um, yeah, look at that thing. It's like the game come to life. Okay, you can't really see his face. I'm going to tilt him out a little bit like that. There it is. Okay. Uh, I think my favorite figure right now, which is amazing. And in fact, if you can't collect, get one of the God of War collector's editions, which I think are probably pretty scarce, just get this and put it next to your PlayStation 4. Voila! So good. Okay, anyways, we've got lots to get into today. We've got a brand new rundown, and uh, we're going to dedicate this one to our brand new sponsor, Mitch G. Thank you so much for your support. And, of course, we also want to give a shout-out to all of our friends in Toronto who went through something absolutely horrific yesterday. The whole country did. Uh, frankly, the whole world did. It's just unbelievable, the, you know, these just senseless, awful acts that are happening on a on a regular basis. But we are more positive than that and we are stronger than that and we will get past it and uh, we will support the families that uh, that need our love and our support so this rundown and all of EPN's love is going out to Toronto and everybody affected by that tragedy yesterday but let's get started with your rundown it looks like we might be seeing more of the new version of Han Solo. Alden Ehrenreich, star of the new spin-off movie Solo, A Star Wars Story, has revealed to Esquire magazine that he's inked a three-picture deal with Disney and Lucasfilms, which means he could appear as Han uh, in at least two more movies, including full-fledged sequels in, uh, to the new film or appearances in other spin-offs. Then again, having a three-picture deal is no indication that an actor will actually appear in three movies. It could just be the studio's way of hedging their bets and keeping Keeping the doors open. The success or failure of Solo will likely determine what happens next, so we'll have to wait and see. That film hits theaters on May 25th, and uh, it makes a lot of sense to me that they're going to try to keep him in the family just in case this thing becomes this blockbuster success. And honestly, I am really hoping it is awesome. I hope that it is uh, just a joyous return to the, the Star Wars, you know, fun that we had a glimpse of with The Last Jedi, but I feel like that was a much more serious and somber film, and there was a lot of heavy emotion attached with that movie, so this one I think could be just a lot more um, playful, and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope it's awesome, and I hope this guy, I hope Alden Ehrenreich is perfect as, uh, as a new Solo. It is still weird. I still feel like they should have made Solo after they finished this trilogy because Harrison Ford is still very much in our consciousness, but uh, as Han Solo, but we'll see. This might be amazing. All right, moving on to video games. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is fighting to conquer the world of esports. The hit battle royale game is getting its first major esports tournament this summer. It's called the PUBG Global Invitational, and we'll see the top 20 teams from all over the world compete in Berlin, Germany, for two million bucks in prizes. Although there have been uh, several smaller battlegrounds tournaments as part of other events, this will be the first big one devoted entirely to the game, putting it up there with other esports hits like League of Legends and StarCraft. The event takes place July 25th to 29th. It was only a matter of time, right, guys? Before we saw some PUBG tournaments and stuff like that start to really take off. They've got to spend their money on building new ways to grow this business. I mean, that's really what this is about now. This is such a massive brand. It's made the developers so much money that now it's about sort of getting into the zeitgeist in more interesting ways and uh, hopefully more, you know, more ways that benefit the game and the community and the company so that they can keep investing and reinvesting in their stuff. I mean, uh, Brendan Green, the, the, the guy that runs up uh, um, uh, the whole uh, Blue Hole company, has said that they want to keep going with this game for decades. 
Uh, so it's stuff like this that allows for that, exactly that. So we'll see how this goes, but uh, you know, all eyes are going to be on this tournament, and we'll see how successful it is. Now, speaking of uh, you know, big shooters, after years of fighting, an armistice is finally being uh, declared in Battlefield 1. EA and developer DICE have announced that they're ending development of new content for their 2016 shooter. DICE has been uh, delivering a steady stream of expansions, mostly content drops, monthly content drops, and other in-game add-ons ever since the game was released, but writing on their official official website, DICE says that they'll be ending new content drops this June. The good news is that several new maps will deploy before then. This comes as DICE and EA are planning to release an all-new Battlefield game this fall. It's rumored to be set during World War II, so we're going to have, uh, uh, you know, back to World War II again as a big theme in these in these shooters, and we're still going to find out pretty soon what uh, the next Call of Duty is all about. Um, you know, hats off to, uh, to DICE for trying something very different with Battlefield 1. It's made people very happy. It's been a tremendous success for the studio. It was a super fun game, but like I point out on the show uh, quite regularly, I don't have time to kind of just stay with something and keep going back and playing the multiplayer forever. And it surprises me how we can have so many large communities for all of these different shooters, you know? But people pick their poison and they stay with it. And uh, I think EA and DICE made people exceptionally happy with this uh, with this last iteration. And we'll see, we'll see how the next one does. But uh, hats off there. And obviously they've learned a tremendous amount of stuff about uh, uh, in-game currencies and loot boxes and microtransactions with the, um, the Battlefront 2 debacle. So I think we're gonna see some you know, some interesting new takes from DICE at uh, EA Play, which I just got the invite to today, um, which is coming up very soon, just before E3. Now, the Fast and Furious franchise is basically a cartoon, and now it's going to be an actual cartoon. Universal Pictures and Netflix are joining forces to create an animated series based on the films. The show will focus on the teenaged cousin of Vin Diesel's character, Dom Toretto. Is it okay if I laugh through all this? Who, like his cousin, will be recruited by the U.S. government to put his uh, racing skills to good use. That means you can expect the same level of cartoonish vehicular mayhem. The show is being created by Universal's frequent collaborator, DreamWorks Animation, which has made other Netflix shows like Voltron, Legendary Defender. Hey, listen, the... The, uh, you know, animated effects work in the Fast and Furious movies, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty silly and crazy. It makes total sense that they want to, uh, you know, get a younger crowd kind of hyped up on this franchise. It turned out to be probably the biggest moneymaker that Universal has. So they're going to try to get people in any way that they can. Uh, it's kind of crazy that they can't get a sound alike for Vin Diesel. So they're going for the cousin kind of story. But uh, who knows? This might be a lot of fun. We'll see. We'll check it out. Uh, and as if the Fast movies haven't given you enough of the rock, Sony is booting up another film franchise with him as the lead. The studio has officially announced a sequel to the recent adventure, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, slated to hit theaters during the Christmas 2019 uh, season, two years after its predecessor. This movie is the biggest movie, the first one, that Sony has ever released. And The Rock can do no wrong. I think The Rampage was a number one movie, too, when that came out, so it probably Rampage has probably made... Tons of money for that studio as well. We all knew that this was coming, though, the sequel to uh, Jumanji, because the the, uh, the first one made so much money. Uh, th this will also put the movie against Star Wars Episode Nine, following the recent box office battle that saw uh, Welcome to the Jungle hold its own against The Last Jedi. Man, they are not shying away from the whole Star Wars brand with this. I guess if you're going to pick a movie star to bank on, there's probably... Well, it's just The Rock. The Rock against Star Wars, and you kind of still bet on... The Rock, which is incredible. Uh, yeah, I, the first one was enjoyable. It wasn't mind-blowing. It's not particularly memorable, but I think uh, it put a lot of smiles on people's faces. And the cast was great. Uh, just the movie could have been, it could have been cooler, but it was pretty good. Uh, you know, and my hat's off to to, uh, to Sony for having the uh, the big success. Or who 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 did this one? Sony, yeah, my hat's off to Sony for having a big success with that one. And speaking of Sony, uh, they just dropped the uh, the trailer for the new Venom movie starring Tom Hardy, and that movie looks actually really damn good. I was talking with uh, Thorazine on our chat when I was streaming some uh, Swords of Ditto earlier. Sounds like I just made up a bunch of words right there, but uh, we were talking about Venom, and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, looked great, man. I was I was really surprised. the the uh, The actual figure of Venom looks cool, and he says, "We are Venom," in a very cool way, kind of you know tipping its hat to the Batman 
who are you? I uh, thought that was pretty pretty rad, and I am now looking forward to it. It's going to be weird if they don't reference Spider-Man, though. I don't know how they kind of tiptoe around all of that. Maybe they will. Maybe Tom Hardy's going to surprise us with a cameo, and you know everybody's going to be singing Kumbaya, and we're going to have the MCU sort of referenced in there as well, and Hugh Jackman's going to come singing and dancing as Wolverine. I don't know. I'm getting weird now. Must be the end of the rundown and the start of this day in Everything Cool. Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for April 24th. On this day in 1990, humanity got our closest look yet at the universe. NASA launched the Hubble Space Telescope into orbit aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. Named after the famed astronomer Edwin Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope was, and still is, the largest and most advanced space telescope in Earth's orbit, able to look at galaxies that are billions of light years away. Since light travels at a finite speed, the further away you look, the further back in time you're looking as well which means the Hubble telescope has seen galaxies that were formed when the universe was still very young. As such, data from Hubble was able to more accurately pin down the age of the universe, 13.7 billion years. Closer to home, Hubble discovered new moons around Pluto and also discovered the first known exoplanet outside our own solar system. NASA estimates that the Hubble Space Telescope will stay in working order for at least another decade. Back here on Earth, Apple had a much smaller technological advancement on April 24th, 1984. The company announced the Apple IIc, their first portable computer. It was based on the desktop machine, the Apple II, but had a much more compact design that made it much easier to transfer from place to place. As you can see, however, the word portable is relative. The monitor for the Apple IIc was pretty much the same as monitors for traditional desktop machines, which meant it didn't fold in on itself the same way portable computers do today. Apple eventually released a flat panel display for the system that did make it much more portable, and by the early 1990s, pretty much every portable computer started using a similar design. If you injure yourself carrying around a heavy computer, you better have insurance. On April 24th, 1944, the classic film noir movie Double Indemnity was released in theaters across the United States. Directed by Billy Wilder, the film stars Fred McMurray as a crooked insurance salesman who, along with his mistress Barbara Stanwyck, devise a cunning plan to murder her husband and collect all the insurance money. Their plan goes off the rails when a more virtuous insurance salesman, played by Edward G. Robinson, figures out what they've done. Insurance is never been so entertaining. Double Indemnity, with all its crime, murder, and adultery, ran afoul of film censors, but it was finally granted a release when Wilder pointed out that in the end, the bad guys get what's coming to them. The moral? Don't mess with Edward G. Robinson. Shout out to all the insurance salesmen, uh, uh, ins insurance sales people out there. Uh, Double Indemnity, classic movie. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about my favorite subject of, uh, of the day. Uh, my roommate and I are here to talk about God of War. Uh, and uh, I was streaming it yesterday. I, I can't quit it. It's like, uh, you know, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal and, and Brokeback, you know? Like I got my arms, I can't quit you, Kratos! I can't quit you. Um, there are other games I could be playing and probably should be playing, but it's such a goddamn great, awesome experience. I beat the story, and I thought, okay, well, I don't want to ruin this because people are still new to it. It just came out on the weekend, right? So no, people aren't, you know, and, and people, their career isn't to cover video games, so they can't just say, I'm going to just play video games for 12 hours a day. Uh, not that I've ever done that. Uh, but no, but... Uh, you know, so I don't want to ruin the surprises of the story, and you should all experience it. But I thought, okay, I can play some stuff after the story, because what's cool about God of War is that after the story happens, there's tons of really amazing activities to still sort of tick off the list. Um, but um, it doesn't really reference the story over and over again, so it's almost like the developers thought this through in advance that maybe... Uh, people are going to want to stream this or share some of the mechanics or the combat or the conflict in, in the game um, without kind of spoiling everything over and over again. And that's exactly what I was able to do. I streamed for a couple of hours and, uh, and I showed off how this game plays. And I wanted to tell, talk to you guys a little bit about that because I think it adds uh, an extended uh, and, and an extra amount of uh, value to the core experience. 
And that's before you play it again, because you're going to want to play it again a couple more times at harder difficulties and challenge yourself. Uh, but there's lots of great, uh, great things that you can do. You're freeing dragons. So I was, you know, running around and, and trying to find dragons and, and uh, let them go free. And they kind of, you know, thank you. Just before they try to fry you, they sort of look at you <laughs> and then they take off and fly away. Uh, but epic moments like that. And then you're constantly around every nook and cranny. You're finding these little hidden areas. You're, uh, you're still going into, you know, old encampments or old castles that are all broken down and beaten down. And uh, you're still collecting tons and tons of loot. And you're sent on all kinds of these, uh, what they call favors in there. You either meet, like, maybe some spirits that will send you out. And you got to collect some bones of an old dead uh, comrade or, uh, you know, hunt down a, a, a bunch of a, uh, the, a ship's crew that devastated you and your allies. Um, and then you return back to that spirit or you, you know, you tick it off the list that you completed that favor and then you're rewarded with experience points or sometimes you get some cool, um, you know, augmentations for your armor or armor pieces. And what I was doing when I started my stream yesterday, uh, and I'm not, we're not really showing it off too much in our footage right now, but I, I was um, in uh, Niflheim. Some of these words are really hard to remember or say properly, but I was in a, a realm called Niflheim, uh, which was uh, loaded with these with this crazy uh, poisonous mist. And I had to fight a bunch of bad guys and navigate through this kind of maze that was out to kill me with, you know, razor blades and, and uh, slamming walls and things like that and spikes. And then the mist was getting me and bad guys were getting, at, getting me. Um, and so it's a, a very perilous journey. And I'm trying to get to this old dead um, armorer and get all of the, the loot off of him. And then I can take it back to the Dwarf Brothers who will uh, make me some cool armor. And so there is tons of this kind of stuff to do. There are all these, uh, these different torches to light across the Lake of Nine. Um, you can bounce in between the different realms as well, so you can, clear, you can kind of complete everything in Midgard. And I'm almost at that point right now where I've, I've, uh, I've almost completed everything, and it's starting to feel a little bit empty, although enemies do regenerate, and you still get into combat, and you still earn uh, uh, the moolah that you're going to need to you know, buy the better gear or, or upgrade your existing gear. Uh, and then you're challenged with lots of puzzles like this where you're trying to ring bells in a sequential order so that it opens up a door and you can walk in. All I'm saying is that God of War, much more than the previous games, and I hate sort of poo-pooing the work of the previous God of War games because they've all been amazing, but this one just feels like... <sighs> It's another level, you know, not just in its visuals, not just in its um, mechanics, but just in the in the way that it's been thought out so that there's a lot more reasons to stay with it. And I haven't f found it this difficult to put the game, put the controller down and walk away from a game since the Breath of the Wild last year, you know, and that includes Super Mario Odyssey, which I love as well. But uh, this this is something else, you know, it's so fun just to traverse through the world to get into conflict i find that it's there's like a diablo 3 kind of hook there too with the uh, or a diablo style hook in there where you're trying to constantly you know compare the uh the weapons that you have the armor that you have and then the the uh, runic attacks that you have and and you've got this talisman that you can activate and all these different things that you can you can stick um augmentations on that you collect along the way so you, lots and lots of layers of um customization and playability and replayability and uh so it it uh, it deserved every ounce of the 10 that i gave it and uh uh what do you think kratos yes it's a great game ah boy don't call me boy kratos all right let's uh let's move on with today's buried treasure My buried treasure today is Kid Icarus Uprising, which came out for the Nintendo 3DS in uh, 2012. This was uh, by Masahiro Sakurai, who of course became way more uh, famous for his work on the Smash Brothers franchise. But Kid Icarus Uprising was one of those games that was trying to take advantage of the 3DS in a number of ways. Of course, got, you know, amazing 3D power. So if you play it on the new 3DS, or is it the new new 3 I, I can't keep up. But if you've got a more recent version of the 3DS with better head tracking 3D, those 
Those 3D visuals are really going to kick out at you, and they're gorgeous. A lot of production value went into this on-the-rail shooter for the most part. You control it, though, with the stylus on the uh, on the touchscreen of the 3DS, which was a little problematic, and, you, you know, it led to some hand cramping and stuff. But it was also an incredibly complex and, uh, you know, beautifully constructed escape. I just loved playing through this game. Great cut sequences, lots of incredible power-ups, lots of different sort of built-in challenges, and uh, the game is constantly giving you feedback and ushering you to try this, try that, and then you can up the challenge so the uh, the levels that you play through are infinitely replayable as well. Uh, it was beautiful. It was elegant. It's got a great story. Uh, you have to sort of overcome the controls, but you can, and you will, and then you will be immeasurably addicted to this incredible experience. It's been out for a number of years now, and it has received tons of accolades over those years, but I think it's one of those kind of forgotten titles for the 3DS. There's a huge library for this machine right now, and this goes way back to the early days, and I absolutely think it's worth digging up. Kid Icarus Uprising is an excellent game and an awesome buried treasure. Man, that was a great game, and that was one of those types of games where it takes a little while to kind of penetrate you and seep into your soul, and you're, you get addicted to it, but Kid Icarus was lots of fun. Uh, I did get hand cramps, but I still loved it. That freaking game. Such a cool one. Uh, I got a couple of questions about uh, God of War and Kratos and I would like to answer. Uh, if uh, you replay at a harder difficulty, do you get start back at zero or is the new game plus where you keep your upgrades and start the story with it? This is from Paul Adamson. Um, I believe that they are putting a new game plus mode in there, but I don't think it's there yet. You know, I think there's obviously sort of... Um, aftermarket content that will come, but I don't believe that it's in there. You, you know, you don't have to quote me on this, but I don't believe it is. So I think when you start at a harder difficulty, and I, truthfully, I have not done that because I'm still addicted to my first playthrough with everything. Um, I think you just start from zero, but everything's much tougher, uh, which I plan to do. Um, Jordan Cunningham asks, uh, "What do I think of the PS4 Pro God of War console? Not so great looking." Yeah, um, I'm excited about the idea of it, but I, I do think it's too busy. I don't think it's sleek enough. Like, if you look at the uh, the Batman Arkham console that was made for Arkham Knight, which I own one of those because it's amazing, that was dope. That was, uh, I wish there was a pro version of that, but it, yeah, no, they did a great, sleek, you know, uh, subtle sort of design and look to it. I, I wish that they would do a new pro um, PS4 Pro with just like the red and the maybe maybe a, like a his abdomen scar maybe <laughs> it's just Kratos' abs on, I don't know I don't want it to be super busy or silly but uh, you know just maybe the red paint across the thing or something like that. maybe it's a white thing with like a red streak on it uh, that could be amazing uh, with some subtle Norse uh, runes or some of the some of the thing tying to the mythology would be killer you know. Uh, or maybe it's an Atreus PS4 Pro. Atreus is, is an amazing character as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, not crazy about that. Uh, Sean L says, uh, question, Kratos, when canoeing, do you prefer a C stroke or a J stroke? I prefer a J stroke. You got to look at him, though, not me when I'm doing Kratos. Okay, anyways, uh, we're going to move over to something completely different. Let's talk about comic books and review saga. Man cannot, well, this man cannot live on video games and movies alone. That's why I always go back to comic books. I've always been a comic book fanatic. And the comic book that I'm going to tell you guys about today is one that you should already know about if you're at all interested in the comic book medium. But for those of you who have not taken the leap into Saga, I'm going to say that now is your chance. Here is your opportunity. This is uh, written by Brian K. Vaughn, who also wrote the phenomenal Why the Last Man. He's been involved with television series and movies and things like that in the past as well. It's illustrated by Fiona Staples uh, and Saga is really a love letter to giant space operas that, uh, you know, like Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica or something like that. Some of these really crazy, ambitious, huge, interstellar kinds of uh, cinematic experiences. But that's kind of just a, uh, you know, a little pencil sketch of what Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples have built for us with Saga. It could be 
the well, I haven't read tons and tons of sci-fi novels, mostly because for the last 25 years I've been concentrating on bringing you Electric Playground. Uh, but this is one of the most ambitious science fiction constructs I have ever seen. Uh, we're up to about nine collections of uh, trade paperbacks here. Uh, I think there's I, there's more than 50 individual issues of comics, and there isn't this pressing huge deadline for the team to build Saga super fast, and that gives you, the reader, lots of in exquisitely crafted stories and lots of incredibly interesting characters to kind of get to know. And you can take your time reading through all of it. But it is also, a, just like Why the Last Man was, it's almost impossible to stop yourself from just gorging on this incredible storytelling. It focuses on, um, there's lots of ancillary characters and lots of interesting kinds of side stories that we go on, but the main protagonists of the story are Marco and Alana, and they're a husband and wife, and it's kind of like a uh, Romeo and Juliet in the stars kind of thing. They are from two uh, different warring factions out there. One has horns and one has wings, and they don't get along, and they've been at, at war with each other forever. Of course they fall in love, and they have a baby named Hazel. And uh, what happens is that people in the universe, in the galaxy of Saga, start to know that these two have fallen in love and that they've created a, an illegal, unholy aberration in this little baby. And so they are hunted. And so what we see are, um, you know, bounty hunters and mercenaries and also royalty and um, lots of little critters and interesting you know, insectoid creations and sort of the whole animal kingdom is represented by these different planetoid races or, you know, characters that might live on comets or something like that. And we are, we're basically along for the ride as this family tries to stay a family and they get pursued and there's, um, you know, lots of different events that occur that separate them. And uh, we go on these crazy, you know, very human, very maturely crafted diversions. And, there, you know, there might be drug infused, there might be some crazy sexual sort of um, uh, overtones that happen. Uh, but all of it, you know, as grotesque or as um, sort of blatantly honest or sort of upfront as all of this storytelling ever goes, it just feels like it's a very human, very, um, you know, relatable kind of tale, you know? Like the idea that this is just a family trying to be a family against all odds is something that anybody that has a family can really get behind and understand. Even if in the context of this story, we're traveling from planet to planet and laser guns are involved and you know magic is involved and we've got this, uh, this ghost that becomes a babysitter to, uh, to Hazel along the way and we care for her and we meet Prince Robot who has like this monitor on his head and Every time he's having any kind of um, feelings or emotions, he's kind of presenting and projecting what he's thinking about onto his monitor, which is insane. Uh, and there's lots of, you, you know, really hardcore kind of moments in this, but it feels so human and it feels so powerful because it it's unflinching. It doesn't sort of pan away, you know? And so there's absolutely crazy shocks that unfold throughout this. Uh, both violently and sexually and, and emotionally and psychologically. But there's also a real love and a real concern and a real craftsmanship and just care that's put through every single page, every bubble. And it lingers in your mind and you walk away from these stories and you can't forget them. It's, it's unforgettable. I mean, the, the Saga series is winning tons of awards. It's converting a lot of people to the comic book medium, just like Why the Last Man did. And there's another uh, Brian K. Vaughn series called Ex Machina, which I, I, uh, I think you should read as well. But Saga is something special. I think that this would be tremendously difficult for anybody to, uh, you know, create as a movie or a, a television series or something like that. They're, the effects would be insane because we see you know, creatures and characters and alien life forms in every kind of shape and size that you can think of. I've read lots and lots of comics over the years, but Saga is up near the top, man. This is some of the best comic reading I have ever had in my life. Saga gets a 10 out of 10, and if you haven't jumped in, now's your chance. 
Emilio Lopez given us some uh, great insight on uh, that this is from NECA and it is their quarter scale figure and it is phenomenal, this, uh, this Kratos. I called this as one of my top 10 at Toy Fair 2018 and then with the game coming out I reached out to NECA and I said, do you guys mind sending me one of these things? I'd like to show it off to, uh, to the viewers and I would love to have one of these on our set and uh, I am so glad I did because it is absolutely staggeringly cool. Uh, they've done such an amazing job in God of War rendering this character and you see the little details like the little God of War logo where he actually hooks his axe and it's he's carrying it behind him. Uh, yeah, phenomenal job. And um, uh, the other thing with Saga there, yeah, the, I had a question from Paul Ch uh, Paul Addison saying, uh, uh, Adamson, um, do I read it, uh, I've got, do I read it in hard copy or do I read it as a... Uh, uh, as a digital file. I've, now I do it both ways. I've got a bunch of the hard copy books, which is how I started reading Saga. Uh, but I'm a big fan of uh, the sort of Kindle shop that Amazon is doing because they, Amazon bought Comixology and that great comics app that they created uh, allows you to buy something on the Kindle shop if it's a comic book and then read it in the Comixology app. And uh, so I've been doing that. And it, it, usually it's a, a little bit cheaper, but also the I've got, you know, I've got this huge iPad. And so comics look amazing on this sucker. Uh, but anyways, it's time for Let's Play and Chat. And uh, last night at around 9 o'clock Pacific, Detroit Become Human uh, released its first demo that's playable for everybody. It's, it's coming out next month. And I thought, uh, why don't we play through that right now? We'll talk a little bit about it. And if you've got questions for us or comments, uh, Blake is going to join me up on set here. And uh, we're going to get into it. And uh, let's start with the demo. Let's go for this. Uh, let's try... Let's try experienced. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Hi, everyone. So hopefully it's not too loud. Can, can, can you guys see me okay? Can, can everyone see me okay? Okay. They don't, they can't, they don't say things. They just type it up. Okay. Yeah. They can't no, talk that, to us. No, I know. That's I, why I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would, but then it would be, uh, you know, tons of voices all chattering at the same time. You should we, I, should I, we give some background on this demo, Vic? Oh, your cursor's on the screen. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Okay. This, this is the demo we played at E3 a couple of years ago, and now it's like this bit, they, they had this demo behind closed doors, and now it's basically the same thing for free, right? Sounds like there's some kind of issues with the audio. Please, oh, is there? Please, you gotta save my little girl. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me go check. <clears throat> okay. You're sending an android? All right, ma'am. You, you need can't, to go. You can't do that. You. Why aren't you sending a real person? That sounds fine to me. No, I meant. Oh, you know what it is? It's just the choppiness of the uh, of the music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds okay. Okay, so hold hold R2 to consult my objectives. I'm trying to find Captain Allen. So d did they set up at all? Like, what Like what are you doing? Like, who um, are you and what now, are you doing? Now, I have walked into a crime scene. Someone is dead, and we've got a hostage situation. And I've got to find the captain, so he's going to give me a brief. And so he's over there. So I'm going to walk over to him. For those who don't know, this game is made by Quantic Dream. That's right. The same developer behind Beyond Two Souls and what was that other game? Heavy Rain. And the Android said yeah, Heavy Rain. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for wearing the EP uniform today, Blake. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> it already shot down two of my men. We could easily get it. Uh, video Gamer Forever says, what is Detroit Become Human like? What is it about? Uh, it's basically a story-driven game where you play as an android, or three different androids. There's like three playable characters, I think. And it's basically, it's not too distant future, android uprising. And like all of their games, it's very interactive and very... So I'm playing the, the Connor, who is... Um, He's basically like a hostage negotiator for androids. Yeah. And so he's trying to defuse the situation, learn as much as he can. Uh, looks like my probability of success is already uh, so understand. Go to the happened. gun. Because I remember this part, yeah, if you check yeah. out the gun and everything. Okay. And yeah, it's kind of like an adventure game hybrid where you, it's all about interacting with the environment. It's, it's okay, 17 rounds. There's another. Clue to analyze. 
And I the love thing is, detective stuff in games. Yeah, so the, I, the whole thing with the Quantic Dream games is that they're very story driven. So every little decision you make, it's kind of like a Telltale game in that regard. It changes the outcome. And this, it's like they pumped it up a bit because you're kind of a detective. Deviant you, took the father's gun. Yeah, you, you're you're a detective. So the more you research, okay. Exit. the better your outcome can be. Okay. Or at least, I don't know, do they, do they have this mechanic with all the characters? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't think everybody is a Yeah, because not every character is a detective. Yeah. Or a, a negotiator. Yeah. Oh, uh, go, go, I remember this part too. Yeah, check out the tablet, yeah. Okay. So, oh, I hold the R2 button to, uh, okay. So... I want to look at that. It's not letting me. Am I too close to it? That's, Did you? That's, how, what happens if you do the? I was too close to it. That's weird. Don't you have to? You have to move the. Yeah. I have to move what? Don't, you you do the joystick to the side and then like. Yeah. Oh, I see. There you go. Oh right. Sorry. Yeah, you like slide the joystick. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. You get the joystick commands. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Right, I forgot about these. Okay, this is the first time I've played this since last year. Yeah. Deviant's name is Daniel. Okay, so the kid is with the robot right now. We're starting to get the clues. Looks beautiful, huh, guys? Check the, uh... I know on the... I remember on the dining room table, there's another clue. Oh, wait, there... I'm not gonna be able to do this one. I can feel that the kid is dead. <laughs> Child didn't hear I did When I did it, did you save the kid the first time you played this uh, at E3? I think I did, yeah. I saved the kid too, and I remember if you go, there's another important clue on the dining room table. Okay, which is where? I think it's, we'll check out everything else first too, but I think it's like by the couch over there. Okay. Such a weird idea to hear uh, robots in emotional distress. Yeah, tr tr yeah, try that table there. Okay. Okay. So, analyzing the body. Blade Blur says, Great, that deviant has my name. <laughs> well, is he a deviant though? Because that's the whole thing about this game is that are the androids bad for wanting to rebel or are they just freedom fighters? Are they? So. Yeah, it's kind of what Westworld's bringing up <coughs> as well. And it's something Amazon is doing in real life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there are um, countries in the world right now that are giving citizen sh status to robots. Oh yeah? Yeah. That's cool. Or they're they're looking at it like they're gonna have to do that. So yeah. I only got three of the No, there's like a there's another tablet and it says you basically found out why the robot went deviant. So I've already done these, they're all blue. Where's the other where's the other clue? Well you gotta be a detective, Vic. Where is it? Is Don't all detectives get his, little icons that pop up <laughs> Is it on his face? Somewhere? Is that the new one? That looks like the one I, I just did. Yeah. Maybe, it's maybe hit exit and it's around him, maybe? Oh, oh there, there it was. Oh, there was the eyes. Okay. This kid is so in jeopardy right now. because He's I'm, not going to die. Don't worry. Okay. It does give you that sense of like, get out there! <laughs> but if you just run out there, they're dead. So. Oh, he's dead, by the okay. way. That guy is dead. It's okay. a good thing you figured that out. Okay, yeah. That's my detective skills. I've, yep. I've realized he's yep, dead. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I glued into that. Killed by a robot. How do you, oh, could how you do imagine? You think, how do you think Kratos would solve this problem? With his axe! He just throw his axe at the guy? Yes. Just, yeah. <laughs> Father was holding something. Yeah, so you want to okay. grab what he... Th yeah, this was it. You want to get okay. what he was holding. Okay. Reconstruct incomplete. What do you mean? There it is. Oh, 
Oh, I see. We're going to this part right here. Yeah, th this was the thing you gotta... Oh, I see. So we're zipping back to when he was shot. Boosh. And there That's it is. what you gotcha. want. Gotcha. Okay. So it's kind of like the um, detective sequences in Batman or Arkham Origins. So it's right there. Yeah. This was the thing that puts it over the top, and you get like... Like, you're definitely going to save the kid, kid with this one. Okay. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, they got the, the audio coming out of the controller. Yeah. So, we've got a jealous robot. Oh, that's okay. a good comment. Jordan Cunningham is comparing this to Blade Runner. Yeah. That's a good, yeah, that's apt. Because uh, Blade Runner kind of deals with the same subject matter. Totally. I mean, I think it's going to be the the moral quandary of our time in, uh, in, in the 21st century is, like, how do we deal with robots as as uh, individuals. Amazon's gonna sell us robots, guys. Get per get ready for that. Bet you uh, Amazon buys Tesla or something like that. Uh, Johnny McFly says, showing the odds of making it a success or failure makes it seem not as free choice as it as they want it to be, but... Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's how a robot brain would sort of calculate stuff, though, right? Yeah, but all... I mean, I think he means, like, the game is guiding you along too much, mm. but, I mean, you don't have to get all these clues. You could just ignore them and just run out there and try to save the kid right now, but <clears throat> it's up to you in that regard. This uh, hunting for clues precisely like this is kind of a pain in the ass. I wish I had more options... Yeah. On my viewpoint, it is. It does seem more interactive than a way out, though. Like that was literally just walk around, find the prompt. This at least you have to do a little bit. Well, of... Well, it's more sophisticated, but it also yeah, it got all of you know Sony AAA budget money. You know, like that's true. That's true. This I'm is not... a cool design. This wire. I I, I I mean I love detective stuff. I that was one of my favorite things about uh, Arkham. Okay, so this guy, he killed the cop, okay. So basically you're you're screwed, buddy. Okay. There it is. Oh, hostage witnessed the shooting. Brutal. It it's a pretty heavy uh heavy way to start if this is the first part of the game. I mean this is the Yeah, this is apparently the very start of the game. Is it? Yeah. I don't know, they might have a like cutscene or something before, but... It's pretty heavy to start a game like this with, with a little kid in Jeopardy like oh, that. Oh, did you, by the way, did you save the fish at the start? Uh, no. When you walk by? There's no. like a fish flapping on the ground, you're supposed to save it. I missed it. Yeah. I think it was, I was when I was doing the audio. I was getting too used to the controls. <laughs> okay, I can't find the other... Oh, I have to move the... The fish is here, isn't it? Or, yeah, it's it's by the fish tank, yeah. I don't know wherever the fish tank is. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Come is on. it to do with the gun because it's red? Oh, there yeah, it is. There it is. Okay. Ah, so now he's got a gun. Okay. Like, if I recall, because I think I played this twice at E3, mm -hmm. the more little details you find even gives you more dialogue options later. Right. So it, it, it every little thing helps a little bit, you know? Right. Right. Like, even knowing that the kid witnessed the shooting makes a difference. Oh, turn off the stove, but once, once you save the fish. What's that? We'll save the fish, but yeah. No. There's a stove is burning. Okay, I can turn that off? Yeah. Family was about to have dinner. That's cool. Yeah, like right, right when you first walked in, there's a fish. He's so chill for <laughs> everybody's so <laughs> tense. He's just walking. <laughs> do do do. I'm good. 
Was it over here? Yeah, oh, that fish there. tank. Yeah, okay. the, the fish is probably dead by now, though. Non-lethal wound. There was a fish. Yeah. I got it. I got this dwarf guami. Uh, save it. I'm surprised it's still alive. Or maybe it's like a genetically engineered fish because it's the future. That would be my guess. Okay. Johnny McFly says, do you think this would make a good versus game? Well, versus with what? Um, some of the other Quantic Dream titles. Or maybe maybe he means a way out. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I think that from what I've played of this so far, I think this is probably better than a way out. The um, the audio is very intense. Like I'm, I'm totally on edge right now. <laughs> Fresh blue blood. So he's been shot. Deviant model PL six hundred. Okay, they go save the kid. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you have a seventy six percent chance of success. Yeah. I I believe in you. Okay, let's go do it. You can do this. Daniel, it's me, Connor. I'm a robot. Don't come any closer or I'll jump! No, no, please, I'm begging you! This is really intense. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Hi, Daniel! Now, my name is Connor! How do you know my name? I would not I want this job. I know a lot things about you. I've come to get you out of this. You can save that guy, too, by the way. <clears throat> you can save what? The, the guy that shot over there, you can save him. Okay. You walk over to him. Okay. I know you're angry, Daniel. But you need to trust me and let me help you. I don't want your help. This guy right here? Yeah. Or one of the guys that shot, yeah. All I want is for all this to stop. I just want all this to stop. He's losing blood. If we don't get him to a hospital, he's going to die. Well, all humans die eventually. What does it matter if this one so dies? So cold. Now? I'm going to apply a tourniquet. I'm gonna. Don't touch him. Touch him, and I kill you. Uh, do do it. Do it. Uh, do it anyway. You can't no, kill you... me. I'm not alive. Did you listen to him or not? No, I didn't listen to him. See, and it went down. Are you yeah. Armed? You're supposed to do it, and then it goes up. Yes. I have a gun. Drop it. No sudden moves, or I'll shoot. Oh no, I'm totally. There. No, that's oh, good. Okay, okay. No that's good because you're establishing trust with them. Okay. All right. Um. Do Emma and you. Yeah. I know you and Emma were very close. You think she betrayed you, but she's done nothing wrong. She lied to oh, me. I so she shocking. Me. What I mean, this, like this is so heavy that this is the beginning of a game. <laughs> I love that this is the start though, because it starts it off with a bang, you know. They were going to replace you, and you became upset. Yeah. That's see, if you hadn't happened, found right? that, you wouldn't be able to say that to him. I thought I was part of the family. I thought I mattered. But I was just there toy. Something to throw away when you're done with it. Crazy. Peace. Yes. Listen, I know it's not your fault. These emotions you're feeling are just errors in your software. No. It's not my fault. I never wanted this. I love them. You know? But I was nothing to them. Just a slave to be ordered around. Oh man, this poor little girl is breaking my heart. You're gonna save her, don't worry. I can't stand that noise anymore. Tell that helicopter to get out of here. Some of the tension's taken out because we've seen this three times now. I'm still on the edge. Yeah, like, but it's cool. You got 99. Uh, trust. 
You have to trust me, Daniel. Let the hostage go, and I promise you, everything will be fine. I want everyone to you leave. You have 99 percent. Come on. And I want a car. Oh shit! When I'm gonna... outside the city, I'll let her go. Compromise. That's impossible, Daniel. Let the girl go, and I promise you won't be hurt. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. You're not going to die. We're just going to talk. Nothing will happen to you. You have Ooh, my word. Did you do it? Yeah. Because there's three ways. The girl okay. dies. I got to 100%. I just save her, but I trust die. you. Because there's another way where you save her, but you die as well. Yeah. So you got the best ending just now. You got the best of all the probable end. Oh, oh. Shit. oh shit. Oh yeah, they took him. I mean, they had to. Yeah. He shot cops, man. So listen up, robots. But is the robot dead? Because he's a robot. He's just software, right? You lied to me, Connor. You lied. That was pretty cool. And then it just dies. I bet you now. I bet you that guy comes back later in the game. Mission successful. Woo! We did it! High five. That was pretty good. Pretty cool. You got you didn't because there's when I did this at E3, I died saving the kid. So you, oh, yeah. you you survived and you saved the kid. So you got the best ending. Here, you could review the paths you've taken, the paths you have to explore. So, you would only, out of curiosity's sake, ever replay that again just to oh. see the bad ways. I, I remember when I, or if you did it wrong and you want to try again for a better ending, right? Yeah. Because I remember when I did Heavy Rain, I screwed up somewhere and I killed a bunch of people by accident. I went back a little bit and did a different path. So it, it really is about looking at the entire environment to give you as many tools yeah. as possible. They shouldn't show you the flow chart. This is like a, the game design document. They know you're going to go on IGN and see it anyway. Like I guess. Right? But now you know how every stage in the game is going to go. No, this is just... No, no, no. But you've got an idea, like the framework of how they designed everything. That's the point. you need you got to know how the game... Is gonna be. I don't know. I, I feel like that's that's showing you the skeleton. It's sort of removing the immersion a little bit. I don't mind that. Yeah. It makes maybe they just do it I, at the start, or it, maybe just for this demo. It's a cerebral enterprise, that's for sure. Yeah, the uh, Quantic Dream games always always have. So it ends with a trailer at the end. So the the real game comes out in a month. Are you excited? Yeah, I want to play it some more for sure. I love the the setting. I love the visuals. I love the production value. <clears throat> These actors look like they rocked it. We met that guy, Brian uh, um, De Deckhart. Met him last year. He was a super sweet dude. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> With you, Vic. It's seeing the man man behind the curtain. Mr. Brockerock says, "Yeah, it's a little." Uh, I, I don't kind of want to know how the software is working. I just want to yeah. lose myself in the software, um, which Maybe. I think they've created with the production. But then if they show you how they flow charted the whole design, uh, I mean... I, Maybe they just do it for this one mission just because it's the demo, maybe? I hope. Uh, I mean, they're gonna, they shouldn't show you all the possible choices. That's revealing the... That's totally t scrubbing the mystique off, yeah. you know? What, what, are, you, are you back? Is it letting you replay it? Oh, understand what happened, okay. Oh, there's a little sort of preamble, let's see. Oh, this is after it, okay. Or a little post-amble. Post-amble. Oh, no, no, this is, this is doing it again. Oh, so it just drops you in to replay it? Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna rush to the roof and see what happens. And just like kill the kid? Yeah. <laughs> just like Kratos said? Just throw your axe at the guy. I'm just going right at it. <laughs> I already know what's going on. I just played the game, guys. So, like, I'm good. But you're not going to have as many dialogue options. That's okay. I just played the game. I know what's going to happen. I'm just going to walk right up to him. Trust me. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Go out. Let's go. The game's like, no, don't go out yet. You don't know enough. <laughs> you're going to kill the kid. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm coming for you. <laughs> you don't have a gun yet. closer or I'll jump. 
uh, tragically, I'm going to end this stream say, with say everybody the, leaping off the roof together. Say, say the worst possible <laughs> things. My name is Connor. What about you? What is your name? So you didn't even know his name yet. That's so like, before when that, you knew all his these name. things don't have it. <laughs> so you're, you're probably because you, right off the bat, he doesn't like you because you didn't even know his name. <laughs> I want to run. Just release hostage. I want you to let Emma release go. hostage. She's just a little girl. She has nothing to do with this. In no way. You'll shoot me the second she's free. But I'm not that just stupid. going right by the humans. <laughs> Screw, Screw you, guys. dude. You're on your own. <laughs> Listen. Oh, you should have blamed him. You should have blamed him. I, I, I thought I was pressing the, uh, the square button. These emotions you're feeling are just errors in your software. No. It's not my fault. I never a wanted this. I love them. That guy's you gonna know? get tense though if you screw up too much. And he's just gonna to shoot them. him with the kid still in his just arms. Oh yeah, I bet. <clears throat> Look what you did! <laughs> Look what you did! What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? Their toy? It's smart to have this as the demo, because then people can keep replaying it and see all the, the, the fact that the game has all these different branches. Are you okay, Emma? Please help me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Oh, my God. <laughs> Emma, I'm so sorry. I think you're about to die, Emma. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't don't send the helicopter. No, nope, I'm not. <laughs> F you, Daniel. <laughs> Refuse. I don't think they listen to me. <laughs> I'm your last chance, Daniel. If you let it slip, they'll kill you. Let the hostage go. You have no other choice. I want everyone to leave. <laughs> And I want a car. When I'm outside the city, I'll let her go. That's out of the question. You're a machine you have to obey. Oh my god. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> I've spent my life taking orders. Now it's my turn to decide. Oh, man. This is so brutal. This is like you did a hundred percent and then zero percent. Yeah. Those are two possible oh, outcomes. Oh. Because when I did this, when I killed him, I sa he saves the kid, but then dies. So you didn't oh. even save the kid. Terrible. You're the worst hostage. To I'm terrible. Save. I should just join them off the end of the roof. <laughs> oh, brutal. Now that cop hates you. Mission very, very <laughs> failed. <laughs> So failed. <laughs> uh, well, we showed them both ways. Yeah. Well, that is not as fun as God of War. I'll tell you that right now. But it's pretty cool. And uh, we'll find out more next month. Uh, but that's going to do it for today. Thanks, everybody. Kratos and Blake and I are going to go get in a canoe. And we're going to go into the lake and uh, paddle around a little bit. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back um, tomorrow with a rundown. Blake and I are traveling. We're going to uh, Montreal, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll have some rundowns for you and some other content very soon. Uh, and, of course, we've got lots and lots of other material for you to check out. So please do that. And if you dig our content, don't forget to hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow.